welcome back to the Be Bell Lab does metabolomics. Um, so basically, we are trying to lyophilize samples of bacteria extracts. So we basically take the stuff that was in bacteria, and now we want to see what's there. And more specifically, we're looking at metabolites. So we're looking at those small molecules that your cells make or that the bacteria cells make. Like when they're breaking down molecules and making molecules, all that good stuff. You think about citric acid cycle, you think about your glycolysis, all those little molecules. We want to see them. And so in order to see them, we're going to use gas chromatography, mass spectrometry, and that is going to let us measure the molecules. But before we can do that, we need to treat these molecules with chemicals that are going to make it so that the molecules will be volatile, so they will vaporize, which is kind of what you need for gas chromatography because then those vapors are going to go through a big spinny wheel of a column and then they're going to get ionized and then there's going to be magnets and stuff that then direct the charged ions to a detector and then you get mz you get mass to charge ratio of those pieces and you can figure out what they are now the problem is our metabolites are really sticky we're going to look at oxaloacetate and malate and citrate and all these cool things with all these cool carboxylic acid groups and OH groups, so we, and we've got our hydroxyls, we've got our ketones, aldehydes, carboxylic acids, you name it, we've got them. And they're really great for when you want to do things in metabolism, but they're not so great when you want things to vaporize. So basically, they stick to one another, you've got all that good hydrogen bond and all that fun stuff, and all that fun stuff will keep them from vaporizing, and in order to get them to actually become a gas, you'd have to heat them up so hot that they just fall apart. And so we need to derivatize them, so we treat them with chemicals that basically hide those parts that make them stick together, and so we methoximate them, and so that's going to add these like methoxamine groups onto the aldehydes and ketones and basically hide those and keep the molecules from tautomerizing and ringifying and all the stuff that then would make it more complicated when you do the next step, which is the Oh man, I can't say this. It's like MFTSA, it's TMS, so trimethylsilane. And so basically what you're going to add is these trimethylsilyl groups. And so you've got like these silicon with like three methyl groups on it. And basically methyl groups, nonpolar, they're gonna make it so that these molecules don't wanna hang out with one another and it's big and bulky and they're just like, no, get away from me. And so what is gonna happen is then that's going to make it easier for the molecules to get away from one another. And so what they're gonna do is they're gonna get away from one another when you give them, up a, give them a little heat, they're gonna vaporize and go through that column and all is good. And so those TMS groups are going to get added to like things like our hydroxyl groups. They're gonna get added to those, like the ends of our carboxylic acids. They're gonna get added to all those good stuff. And if we hadn't done the methoxamation first, then we would get more products, which would make things really annoying and try to tease apart. Too many products we can't measure. We want less products in the end. So we're doing this derivatization so we can find our, what we want a little bit easier instead of having all these multiple products. But before we can derivatize them, we need to lyophilize them to get rid of all of the water, which it would interfere with our reactions. Okay, so we open the lid of the frozen tube, stick on the cap with the holes, and stick it in the little styrofoam thing to hold it, okay? And then just do this for all four. So, yeah. so we wanna make sure we have the whole cap so that the water vapor can escape once it sublimes off. But we want to still have the normal caps because we're going to use these tubes later. Oh, no. or, I, I guess that one. one froze off. That's okay. We'll, we'll, we can at least, yeah, use that. Put a new lid on it. It's okay. okay. But this way we're going to be able to do the derivatization step directly in these little ones as opposed to the big ones, and that's gonna avoid us getting, having trouble getting the like 40 microliters, trying to get everything out of the big tube. So Haley's gonna put it up there, okay. and now she's going to open the vacuum. There we go. So now the vacuum is aligned, and so the pressure in here is going to go down, 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 down. We have the subliming, so basically the water is going to, because of the low pressure in here, it's going to vaporize, and it's going to vaporize directly from a solid to a gas without going through the liquid phase. Because of the low pressure, we're getting this sublimation rather than melting. 
and so it's going to keep us from having to heat up our samples really hot in order to get rid of all that water because we need that water to be gone or else it's going to mess up when we try to methoximate it and then silylate it in order to make it compatible for GCMS. Haley, what are we doing? We are methoximating and silylating our samples. We are, and why are we doing that? So we can derivatize them for the GCMS. It's really important that we keep moisture out and so we actually have a little paraffin over the lids to try to keep out the water. Yay! Haley's awesome. We're gonna have some fun. So we methoximated them. That was taking care of capping off those like ketones and the aldehydes so that things didn't tautomerize and rarefy and things and now we are silylating them which is a very fun word that we have practiced saying lots and lots and lots <laughs> silly silylation so we'll basically add these big bulky methyl groups that are then going to make them so that they don't want to stick to one another and so that they can go be a gas and we don't have to put enough to make heat them up to make them a gas, we want to make sure that we're not heating them up so much that we kill them. And so we need to make them more volatile so that they will go into the mass phase so that they can go through the column and then they're not gonna be like stuck on the column or weird stuff because of the derivatization as well. They'll kind of travel better through the column and separate better and things like this. And then they will get ionized and go to a detector and we will compare them to a database to see how they look. It's working! At least the machine. Um, our data, we're still trying trying to figure out that part, but but we're getting peaks, which is which is good. And now we just need to figure out what the peaks are telling us and how we can get better peaks and make sure that we can identify the peaks and all this fun stuff. And so the goal for today is basically to get some data that we can play with over the weekend. Well, at least me, Kaylee should go do something fun over the weekend. Uh, but I got to grade and do this and then, but I can see my parents too, so it'll be fun. So it might not be the world's prettiest data, but oh my God, it's so freaking cool that you can actually go and you can look inside of bacteria and see these metabolites that you see on all these charts. And so like this one, we've got our malate. So it's a derivative of malate because we stick on those TMS groups to keep make it volatile. And then you can see like this one is fumarate. And then we have sustenate. And then we have some other stuff that we can't identify. There's like a product of glutamate. And then there are various things. So the derivatizing agents, so the methoxamine and the MS MFTSA or whatever. So they'll sh they show up down here and then they kind of like have a combined product that's over here. And then you have the leftovers from the reaction. So again, like it's not the world's prettiest data, but it's a start and we're really excited. And so our... When we try just doing the standards, derivatization of the standards, we were having some weird results, but we got one good sample in, or not good, but I mean, like we got, we got an identifiable sample. And so I think this is a really strong starting point and proof of concept. And I'm really excited that next week we'll get to play around more. And my students in my biochemistry class, they're going to be derivatizing their samples and running their samples too. And so we're really excited. It's really fun learning and it's just really exciting and so i still need to speaking of learning i need to figure out the software to actually get it to export what i wanted to export but i'm going to try out some other like non-commercial software just public software open source stuff and i found some cool websites and so i'm just playing around and having fun and trying not to get sucked too deep down in the rabbit holes so that i make sure i get everything else i need to get done too done okay well really excited and can't wait to keep going we're still we're still happy we're still hopeful and this is our the next step of our saga it's fun taking people along on this journey with us especially as we're trying to figure out what we're doing because these are new techniques to us um, but the great thing about training to be a scientist is that once you kind of know the basics and you know how to approach scientific problems and you know how to read protocols and you know how to find people who can help um, then you really can do all sorts of things and you never have to stop learning and so scientists are constantly learning and so a lot of this I'm really really good at and I know really really well and a lot of these techniques I'm like yes I got that and then some things are like I haven't done this before but that doesn't mean I can't do it now and so let's figure it out and so never feel like you can't do something believe in yourself find people that can help 
learn to read protocols and papers and all this good stuff and just go for it.